Welcome to the tribe. Today, we're going to dive into an underwater discovery. I realize we haven't done that many on this channel, uh, but I love this stuff. It doesn't matter if it's an archaeological dig, if it's the ocean, space. I'm here for all the theories, discoveries, everything like that. Let's dive in. Let's unpack. This is a map of the North Pacific Ocean. And in the western part of this, you can spot an archipelago shaped like a crescent. These are the Mariana Islands, and the southernmost and largest of these is a U.S. territory called Guam. About 200 kilometers east of the Mariana Islands lies the deepest part of our entire planet. This is the Mariana Trench. Scientists have been fascinated by this location due to the abundance of terrifying things. The Mariana Trench is a gift that keeps giving because we are discovering more and more scary things. In this video, we bring you the new terrifying discoveries scientists have just made in the Mariana Trench. We all know that water covers more than 71% of the Earth's surface, but what lies in the depths of this water is still a mystery for us humans. The Mariana Trench is one of these dilemmas baffling scientists with its extraordinary features. Located in the Western Pacific Ocean, this is the deepest oceanic trench on the surface of the Earth. It's about 69 kilometers wide and nearly 2,550 kilometers long. That's more than five times the length of the Grand Canyon. The maximum known depth of the Mariana Trench is about 10,984 meters. But some measurements place its deepest portion, also called the Deep Challenger, at about 11,034 meters. To put this into perspective for you guys, if the world's tallest mountain, Mount Everest, was placed in the trench at its deepest point, the peak would remain underwater by at least two kilometers. The Deep Challenger lies about 322 kilometers west of the U.S. territory of Guam. This trench is part of a global network of deep troughs cutting across the ocean floor. These troughs are formed when two tectonic plates collide. One of the plates dives beneath the mantle of the Earth at the point of a collision, resulting in the formation of an ocean trough. The second deepest place on our planet is also in the Mariana Trench. It's called the Serena Deep and lies about 200 kilometers to the east of the Challenger Deep. The majority of the trench is now a U.S. protected zone as part of the Mariana Trench Marine National Monument, established in 2009. The Mariana Trench is cloaked in darkness thanks to its incredible depth. The temperature here is only a few degrees above freezing, and the crushing water pressure of 8 tons per square inch is about a thousand times more than the atmospheric pressure at sea level. I have a question. Would you guys go down to the Challenger Deep? If they, if, hey, listen, we got this, this, you could go right down and, like, what was it that um, James Cameron went down and he created his own thing and went down there? The people that went down before him, the original people, I want to say they had like a reinforcement glass and it cracked or something. I remember seeing some videos on it. We might have to pull something like that up someday, but. I don't think I would be able to go down there. I don't care if you tell me you got the greatest technology in the world. I'm probably going to turn it down. If you if you if you disagree, comment below. Let me know. Let me know that you're going down because I don't know if I, I just I don't know. It just seems like the worst idea ever. The deepest point of the trench remains largely unexplored, and the only time humans descended into it was nearly 50 years ago. In 1960, Jacques Picard, Navy Lieutenant Don Walsh, were the first and only two people to reach this point in a U.S. Navy submarine called the Trieste. It took them five hours to reach the Deep Challenger, but they only managed to spend 20 minutes down there. They were unable to take pictures because their passage had caused clouds of silt to stir up. Before these unnerving expeditions, scientists believed that it wasn't possible for life to exist at such a depth and under such extreme pressures, but Picard narrated that he saw a creature that looked quite like a flatfish down there. The Trieste expedition cleared all doubts about life existing in the very depths of the Mariana Trench, but even today scientists know little to nothing about the organisms and creatures that inhabit this trench. It's impossible for calcium to exist at such pressures, so the bones of any vertebrates down there would dissolve. But nature is known for challenging science with its remarkable capacity to adapt. Despite the extreme acidic, cold, and dark environment, around 200 known microorganisms and tiny critters have been discovered thriving in this trench, including bacteria, crabs, sea cucumbers, strange octopuses, and terrifying fish species. And we're about to show you some of the most unexpected finds from this trench and many other places underwater, so make sure you stick around till the end. In recent years, deep ocean dredges and remotely operated submarines have hinted at the presence of exotic organisms, including shrimp-like amphipods and mysterious translucent creatures called holothurians. But researchers and marine biologists think that many new species are awaiting discovery in the calamitous nooks and crannies of the world's oceans and seas. 
The shiny, shrimp-like scavengers we call amphipod surviving at such incredible depths is a mystery yet to be solved, as it's not possible for their shells to sustain the extreme pressures of the trench. A supergiant amphipod species known as the Hyrundalea gigas measures about 2 inches in length. These are literally considered giants when compared to their beach-hopping relatives. Amphipods are usually found living in swarms. These opportunistic scavengers munch on fallen organic matter, whale falls, plants, and even sunken wooden ships. Back in 2019, Japanese researchers revealed that at least one of the Mariana Trench-dwelling species uses aluminium extracted from seawater to strengthen its shell. In a 2012 expedition, scientists also spotted microbial mats in the Serena Deep. These clumps of microorganisms were found feeding on hydrogen and methane, released as a byproduct of chemical reactions occurring between rocks and seawater. The Mariana Trench is the hub of strange and downright frightening species that will make you doubt your own eyes. One such creature is the Sea Devil Anglerfish, and once you see it up close, you will realize it has been accurately nicknamed the Black Sea Devil. This is the scare. I can't stand this. This fish, like, I have nightmares. I don't like this fish. I, I want to say that this is the female as well, and what's interesting is the male is tiny, and it just latches onto the female, and once it's there, I'm pretty sure it, like, fuses to it, and that's the rest of its life. It just, it feeds it the, you know, necessities to make the babies, and then it's just like, hey, take me for the ride. It looks like something straight out of the deepest pits of hell. The way this strange fish reproduces is also quite unsettling. Look at that. The hey, male fish I know fuses things. with the female to reproduce. The sea devil anglerfish can be found at a whopping 975 meters below the surface. The body of this fish is constituted of an array of bizarre features, including razor-sharp teeth, a misshapen body, and an eerie stare. The creepiest thing about this fish, however, is the way it lures in its prey. There's a specialized appendage on its forehead that looks like a fishing rod. The appendage has a glowing light attached to its end, which attracts animals the sea devil is planning to feed on. Once these unfortunate animals get close enough, the massive jaws of the anglerfish are around it in no time. This fish is even capable of eating creatures much larger than itself, so their eyes might be big, but definitely not bigger than their stomachs. All the scary creatures that inhabited these immense depths aren't alive and well to tell their tale. Some of them, like the Megalodon, have gone extinct millions of years ago, and now we only find trace evidence indicating that they inhabited these waters way back in time. One such prehistoric creature that no longer exists on the planet is the terrifying Lyopleurodon. This carnivorous marine reptile navigated the waters of the Mariana Trench during the Colovian stage of the Middle Jurassic era. Forget a shark, imagine running into that guy. Sheesh! I also didn't know that the Megalodon actually existed so deep into the ocean. That's, that's actually something new for me. It was about 9 feet in length, and according to scientists, it ruled the Pacific waters like a king. They think Lyopleurodon thrived in this deep trench as it possessed the ability to swim long distances. It also had four limbs that looked like paddles. These monsters may not have been able to propel themselves towards prey in order to grab it in one swift motion. They were instead able to increase their speed and ruthlessly attack the unsuspecting animals. Their long snouts served the purpose of smelling out prey, and this had led scientists to infer that these huge reptiles didn't rely on their vision when they were hunting. Besides, it was way too dark down there anyways. The Lyopleurodon may have been a strong and vicious predator, but it eventually lost the race to more adaptive species and went extinct nearly 150 million years ago. This occurred mainly due to the increasing competition for prey against the other thriving reptiles dwelling in the ocean depths. It's actually a relief that this horrifying creature no longer lives in the oceans. Imagine coming across a massive predator able to chew you up within a few minutes. A slightly less menacing resident of the trench is the Dumbo octopus. This deep-sea octopus derives its name from the beloved cartoon elephant Dumbo, featured in the 1941 Disney movie with the same name. The floppy elephant-like ears resting on top of its rather small body that measures up to 12 inches and the googly round eyes are probably the reason it got the cute name. Dumbo is the deepest living octopus known to humanity. They're also called umbrella octopuses because their arms are interconnected by webbed skin. So when the octopus spreads its arms, it looks a lot like an umbrella. Well, a deep sea umbrella covered in slime would be a more accurate description. It belongs to the genus Grimpotuthis and preys on bivalves, worms, copepods, and crustaceans. The average lifespan of the species is between three to five years. This is the only Syrat octopus species that doesn't have an ink sac. They usually crawl on the sea floor with the help of their webbed arms, but some Grimpotuthis species have been found capable of jet propulsion too. 
They can also stream through the ocean by flapping their floppy ears in the water. They're usually found at a depth of at least 9,800 meters. The first ever specimen wasn't observed until the 1990s, when the first deep-sea submersible vessels were invented. The gelatinous body matter is Dumbo's secret to survival under the extreme pressures of the Mariana Trench. In fact, the pressure keeps his body together, and if it's brought to the surface, it wouldn't be able to function properly. Now, there's no doubt that the Dumbo octopus is a charming creature, but it's better to steer clear of it, as, like most other Mariana Trench residents, it's also a vicious predator, capable of swallowing its prey whole in just one gulp. Another amazing yet exceptionally unusual resident of the trench is the Xenophyophore. These are single-celled creatures, but not at all micro. In fact, their length is measured in inches. That's quite enormous for a single-celled organism, as most unicellular creatures can't be visualized without a high-powered microscope, but not the Xenophyophore. This creature is so big, you might even trip over it. You'll need around 100 billion human cells to fill the space inside a single cell of this organism. These single-celled, multinucleate creatures resemble giant amoeba and consume their prey by surrounding them and afterwards absorbing their food. They've recently been classified as Pharominephorans, a type of amoeboid protists. These xenophyophores are quite abundant in the deep sea, with local densities up to 2,000 per square meter. Experts think they play an important role in the marine ecosystem, but as of yet, very little is known about how they actually contribute. These are, however, not the only unexpectedly large creatures dwelling in the deep sea. The Xenophyophore is in fact just one example of the gigantism existing in the farthest corners of the oceans. There is a sort of pattern visible among the species living at such depths. They're much bigger as compared to similar life forms residing in the shallow waters. The Mariana Trench is home to a number of creatures that are much larger than their surface and shallow water relatives. For instance, the giant isopod quite closely resembles the ordinary pill bug. Despite being long-lost cousins, the difference between their sizes is pretty remarkable. A pill bug can easily fit on the tip of your finger, but the giant isopod is around one foot in length. Giant squids also bear almost similar features as that of a regular squid, and the two are definitely related. Squids are so interesting to me. Tell me anybody believes in the Kraken. There's a Kraken there. I mean, listen, back in the day, there might have been. I'm just, just, I'm just putting it out there. But the giant squid is enormous enough to have inspired many tales of terror. This vibrant contrast in size of these organisms can be attributed to a unique phenomenon occurring at extreme depths. It has been described in a 2006 research by biologist Craig R. McLean, who compared deep sea conditions to those of faraway islands. The scarcity of resources has led creatures inhabiting isolated islands to also embrace gigantism, just like the ones living many miles below the water's surface. One theory argues that life isolated in a smaller area, having few resources, tends to have larger bodies that can survive the periods of starvation more efficiently. It's also possible that animals having less number of predators grow to be larger than their more threatened counterparts. It's fascinating how organisms living on the surface and in shallow waters made their way into the depths and then managed to expand their bodies to extraordinary sizes over time. No wonder the depths of the oceans are teeming with insanely large and frightening creatures, most of which we haven't even discovered yet. In recent years, remote submersibles have unraveled more of the Mariana Trench secrets. One of the most abundant inhabitants of this part of the ocean are the Holothurians. Commonly known as Sea Cucumber, it was probably the creature Picard witnessed deep in the Mariana Trench. These stunning creatures make up a vast majority of deep sea life. And no I'm sorry, but you cannot tell me that that does not make you think of something completely differently than what it is. <laughs> yeah, sometimes my mind is just inappropriate. I can't help it. I'm so sorry. I promise you, I'm more mature than this. For breathing through their anus. Okay, that is. Oh, wow. That was what it was. Okay, never mind. I take it back. It's nothing about being mature. I was just very accurate in my depiction of what that was. In fact, the three most common organisms dwelling at the bottom of the Mariana Trench include Xenophyophores, amphipods, and small sea cucumbers. The sea cucumber is a tiny echinoderm belonging to the class Holothuroidea. Their skin has a leathery texture and their bodies are soft and elongated. They are named for their shape, which closely resembles the cucumber. They are known for expelling their guts in order to protect themselves. These deep-sea holothurians also provide housing to other smaller organisms inside their bodies, just like their upstairs relatives. This creature plays a vital role in the marine ecosystem, cleaning down detritus and other matter. They contribute to the ecosystem by tidying up the habitat. 
One of the top predators inhabiting the Mariana Trench is a vulnerable-looking fish called the Mariana Snailfish. But don't be fooled, the harmless outlook of this unusual creature is just a deception. Also referred to as the Mariana Hadel Snailfish, this creature is exceptionally well adapted to the extreme conditions of the trench. Specimens of these fish were first collected by scientists in 2017. The Mariana snailfish lives at a depth of around 8,000 meters. It has a small, pale, pinkish body that lacks scales and resembles a tadpole. It usually grows up to 11.3 inches in length and weighs around 160 grams. From the looks of it, the survival of this fish in the punishing environment of the Deep Sea Challenger seems unlikely, but this little creature full of surprises is here to prove us all wrong. In a study published in a journal called Zootaxa, researchers have explained that this seemingly insignificant fish dominates the deep sea ecosystem. It does so by going deeper than any other fish in the ocean, and benefiting from the absence of many predators and competitors. It gobbles up the abundant invertebrate prey living at the bottom of the trench and thrives despite being the underdog. As compared to shallow water snailfish, it has several astonishing adaptations that help it in navigating the dark, high-pressured waters. The Mariana snailfish's skin lacks pigment and is more or less transparent. The organs and eggs are relatively enlarged, muscles are thinner, bone ossification is incomplete, especially in the skull, and it has very little to no vision. It's mind-boggling how a tiny, vulnerable little fish can dominate such an arduous habitat. Just like any other natural wonder, human activity and its tainted footprint has also made its way down to the deepest point in the ocean. In a recent study published in Nature Ecology and Evolution Journal, scientists have discovered that there's more pollution in the Mariana Trench than there is in industrialized areas surrounding it. What? Yeah, we, we, we're making some bad decisions as people sometimes. Bioaccumulation has led to a rapid rise in contamination from man-made resources. It's incredible how humans have managed to pollute one of the remotest parts of the planet, a part they have barely visited a few times. Unfortunately, it's been revealed that the bottom of the Mariana Trench is littered with disposed plastics like bottles, cutlery, and polythene bags. It's been duly demonstrated time and again that microplastics are hazardous to marine life. The aquatic ecosystems are already suffering gravely from the consequences of overfishing and the drastic climate change. This is so, so sad. I'm not saying that any of us, like, I don't think I've ever, I don't, I'm not like I don't even live by the ocean, but I've never thrown anything in the ocean. I don't think I would. I wouldn't throw anything in a lake, in a pond. But apparently there's people that just don't care. Or you're on the boat, you're like, ah, oh, well, I just throw it out. I don't know. Or, I mean, I don't know. Don't be these people. Don't be these people. It's so sad to see these animals like this. You know what I'm saying? Like, they, they don't, especially like, like it gets caught in that net. This, this turtle don't know what to do. It's just going to go about its life until it just expires now. In, unless this person obviously can fix it. But it's just, I don't know. It's so sad to see this stuff really frustrates me. The high concentrations of these pollutants at such depths speaks volumes about the long-term and catastrophic impact of humanity on the planet and its other residents. It's quite unfortunate that humans are blindly contaminating these wondrously biodiverse habitats. Approximately a garbage truck's worth of plastic ends up in the ocean every single minute. A recent what? study from Newcastle University has revealed that amphipods living in the Mariana Trench have all consumed plastic at some point in their lifetime. In fact, the amphipods in this study contained levels of contamination almost similar to those found in one of the most polluted industrial zones in the Northwest Pacific called Suriga Bay. Approximately 8 million tons of plastic makes its way into the world's oceans every single year. A retired naval officer recently completed the deepest solo underwater dive, and to his disappointment, he found a plastic bag at the bottom of the Challenger Deep. The explorer made this trip as part of his five deeps expedition. He swam in a crisscross manner all over the bottom in hopes of finding a new and different wildlife, unique geological formations, man-made objects, and more. He was also trying to see if there was an even deeper location than the Deep Challenger. He isn't the only one to have found plastics littered in the trench. Recent researchers have identified as many as 3,000 pieces of trash just in the Mariana Trench. Sadly, whatever waste makes its way into the Mariana Trench stays there forever, and so far we haven't figured out a way to retrieve the harmful garbage from the ocean floor, especially the deeper parts like Mariana. Unfathomable creatures and garbage from the Earth's surface aren't the only perplexing things scientists have found in the Mariana Trench. There's also a creepy extraterrestrial sound that can be heard in the deepest part of the ocean. 
A recording made down there was released recently, and it has a strange booming sound with deep moans at lower frequencies and a metallic finale at severely high frequencies. Scientists have named this sound the Western Pacific Biotwang. Passive acoustic ocean gliders were used to record this sound. These are autonomous vessels capable of traveling for months at a time in order to eventually reach extreme depths of more than 30,000 feet. This eerie call lasts only two and a half to three and a half seconds. After pondering on this matter, what was that? What? This eerie call lasts only two and a half to three and a half seconds. So like the first part for a second, I'm like, all right, maybe it was like, a, you know, like with the bloop sound, I think that they determined, I don't know that they said 100%, but maybe it was like icebergs rubbing against each other. There was something to it. I might have to look up to see if there's an update about that sound, but that was what I got initially from the first sound. It could have been maybe, I don't know, but then the second part was really weird. I'll play it one more time and then and we'll move on, but it's odd. I've never heard this before. Seconds. Comment below what you think. After pondering on this matter for quite some time, the experts have identified this call oh, okay. as a sound that is produced by dwarf minky whales. All right, never mind. Frequency moaning <laughs> this Sometimes I should just not pause and just let it go. I'm like, oh, I got to figure this out. Bio twang is typical of the baleen whales. These creatures produce a group of region-specific calls, including Boeings in the North Pacific and low-frequency pulse trains in the Atlantic Ocean. But the scientist's knowledge of the minke whale distribution at low latitudes is very limited. It is the smallest species among the baleen whales, tends to avoid the surface, and has an inconspicuous blow. It prefers to live in areas where high seas prevent the sightings of these whales. However, they frequently call, so marine biologists think these whales are good candidates for acoustic studies in the deep trenches like the Mariana. Geologists are aware that most of the volcanic activity on our planet occurs in the oceans, and that's probably why most of it goes undetected and unseen. It's actually pretty common, but studying this deep-sea volcanic activity is a tough task. Despite the difficulty and the limited access, scientists have discovered something rare and astonishing on the cusp of the Mariana Trench. According to the experts, an underwater volcano eruption tossed out heaps of molten magma into the ocean surrounding it. At a depth of two and a half miles, this mind-blowing event is now considered the deepest known volcanic eruption on Earth. As the searing hot magma comes in contact with water, it rapidly cools down, resulting in the formation of an extensive volcanic glass field. This field reaches about four and a half miles. Undersea earthquakes associated with volcanic activity are usually small in magnitude, and the instrumentation of these earthquakes is far up on land. Since most of these events occur at extreme depths, it's hard to notice clues of these on the surface. Submarine eruptions are therefore considered among some of the strangest geological phenomena. Generally, after an eruption, heat is dissipated and venting occurs for a few years following the eruption. Organisms begin to colonize these newly formed vents, thereby creating an entirely new ecosystem in the deep sea. It doesn't matter if the volcanoes are long dead, home to hydrothermal vents, or actively spewing hellfire from the core of our planet, the deep-sea expeditions to places like the Mariana Trench show that life is surviving and thriving in these unfavorable environments. As beguiling as it is, the Mariana Trench isn't the only part of our planet's endless waters that hide some murky secrets. There's an infamous lost city off the coast of England called Yorkshire's Atlantis. For those of you who don't know, Atlantis is a fictional island mentioned in an allegory on the hubris of nations in the works of Plato and is supposedly located somewhere in the depths of the Atlantic Ocean. According to archaeologists, it's a fabled medieval town and its real name was Ravensir Odd. But for over 650 years, no one knew where it actually was. About 1500 years ago, it was a prosperous port town built on a sandbank. This was the point where the coast met the river, but in 1362, a perilous storm caused water levels to rise and the flood washed away almost all the buildings. The survivors couldn't do anything beside retreat inland. Since then, the foundations of this unfortunate town have been hiding underwater. Technically, no one knows where it is yet, but we do know for sure that it is down there somewhere and one day it will be found. University of Hull professor named Daniel Parsons has become obsessed with the lost town, and it's become his life goal to find it at any cost. See, that's what's interesting. So they know that this town did exist. This isn't like, oh, this is some myth, some... We know it existed. We know that it was on the shore, so it's most likely going to be underwater, but we don't know exactly where. I guess I'm just curious how they know for sure, but if they do know, 
and you can't find it, that's when it's like, who knows? Who knows what's, I, the ocean is so big. It's so big. And this is where I come from where I'm like, it's so sad that we put so much money into the military and I get it. I get why we do. I get why country, but like if humans were just not so divisive and we could put all those billions into exploring the ocean, exploring space, the amount of stuff that we would know right now and be able to talk about in these videos. Oh my goodness. It makes me upset sometimes. He thinks that the remnants of this town are lying on the seabed and they've actually been sighted many times by commercial lobster fishermen when the tide was low. He was able to raise money to fund a research project dedicated to finding ravens are odd, but after searching an area of 25 acres, he was still unable to find any evidence of the lost city. A second survey is supposed to be done this year. The researchers are positive that this time they'll be able to locate the mysterious city. A riveting ancient underwater city that has actually been found is called Thonis. The Greeks, however, called it Heraklion. It is located off the northern coast of Egypt. Before it was discovered, most people thought it was just a mythical city, only ever mentioned in the chronicles of Greek authors. But in 2012, at a depth of 50 meters, this city was suddenly discovered near Abuka Bay. It had been concealed underwater for more than 1,200 years. Scientists themselves haven't explored all of this city yet, but in the portion they have explored, they found strange statues of the goddess Isis and those of other deities, temples, granite columns of royal palaces having Egyptian and Greek inscriptions, sphinxes, fragments of ancient Egyptian ships, gold, and more. It's baffling how perfectly preserved and intact these artifacts are. Frank Godio, an underwater archaeologist, also came across a two-meter-long slab made of black granite with the name of the city Heraklion carved in it. Archaeologists have stated that an overwhelming number of artifacts are still hidden in this underwater city, and it will take them around two centuries to study all of them. But the real question is, how and why did this extravagant city end up at the bottom of the sea? Do you have any theories? What sort of terrifying things do you think are dwelling in the darkest pits of the ocean floor? A lot of stuff. A lot of stuff I don't want to, I mean, I want to know about, but I don't want to ever experience. You know, that's why I'm happy that we got people like James Cameron and we got these scientists and deep sea divers that want to go down and figure all this stuff out for me because I'm, I'm super appreciative. I love to, to learn. I love to read about. I love to watch these videos, all that, but I do not want to go down there. Comment down below if you, if you could be convinced to go in and explore something like this. Like, I'd go explore, like, Machu Picchu, like, anything above ground. But water, yeah, I'm good. Space, you guys can do it. Report back. Let me know. Um, yeah, with that said, I appreciate you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please smash that like button. Hit that subscribe. I will catch you next video, homies.